Hey, welcome back to our channel. This is Off Grid Power and I'm in my camper van currently and one of the things that has bugged me about this camper van since I got it was the fact that it's pretty dim here in the hallway. So there's a big cupboard over here and uh, at night you can really struggle to see into there. Literally I've been using a torch and stuff like that. But I've kind of just been using the camper van as is since we got it with the viewpoint of figuring out while we use it where it needs additional lighting and stuff like that. So one of, the re one of the things that I've realized now is that we definitely need more lighting here in this sort of walkway next to the kitchen and with the bathroom behind us and stuff like that. So I've got this light here on Amazon and I'm gonna mount it right here. But one of the things that I'm trying to do is to keep it as discreet as possible. So not having big channels or trunking or anything like that going right across the ceiling trying to just keep with uh, the aesthetic and, and the decor and the trim that's already been used in the van so one of the ways that I'm doing that is that I pulled this off here this is just a little bit of trim uh, it's got some sort of paper on it and it obviously matches the ceiling and it went along this line here and it was just stapled on but I, <coughs> I can clearly see that there's a join here between the two pieces of the ceiling board. There's a couple of them along the way. So obviously they've got various, uh, they've just put it in in modules and sheets um, and then they've taped the join and then stuck one of these bits of trim over the top of it. So what I intend to do, I've run the wires already and uh, what I intend to do is to actually route a small channel beneath where this piece of trim goes that I can hide the cables in. Uh, some, no, it's not gonna be very, deep it's going to be literally like three or four millimeters something like that uh, just big enough to put a small bead of psychoflex in there just an, an adhesive to be able to hold the cables in and then I'll put some more psychoflex over the top of it and on the sides of the channel and the psychoflex is what will hold this piece of trim in obviously anyone that's worked with psychoflex knows that as soon as you put that stuff on that thing ain't going no way this piece of trim will probably never come off there uh, in its lifetime but at least the cables will be well hidden. I'll just route them basically straight out like that and into the light and I'll put the light right up against there so you won't even be able to see the cables. And then I'm just gonna wire the cables into the loom uh, straight here in the cupboard. There's a feed that comes to lights that are underneath here. So as you can see there, turn them on and off. I'm basically gonna take the wire that comes off that switch and I'm gonna splice the cable into that and one of the reasons why I'm doing that is because then it's all fused already there's a fuse box in one of the lockers and I know that the fuse that's used for those lights will then apply to the new light that I put in um, so yeah that's the plan uh, this light is very low uh, uh, wattage or it'll draw very low current from the system it's LED and I think it's the equivalent of like six watts or something like that so um, I'm using very thin wire uh, because it just doesn't need strong like big wire uh, thick wire it's it's gonna be drawing a very low current so yeah that's the plan so if you're interested hopefully this video is helpful for you so follow along and let's get to it so we started out by measuring between the two so I wanted to get the light centered. I just used a screwdriver to scrape the bit of tape that was there to get my marking because I knew I would be covering it up again with that piece of trim again. And uh, then I got my router so this was probably the most nerve wracking part of the whole project. I uh, wasn't overly keen on the idea of cutting a big groove in my camper van roof uh, but I also didn't want any um, additional trim or trunking or anything like that or just bare wires uh, on display I wanted the wires hidden um, and I'm pretty confident with my hands I've got pretty steady hands so I knew that I could cut a, a line straight down the center just uh, free handing it like this um, but I would say if you aren't confident with this sort of tool uh, then don't try this until you've practiced it and stuff and I did a lot of practice uh, runs in my workshop to make sure that I got the depth right and all that sort of stuff obviously it didn't need a, a very deep groove just wanted something that would just hide wires and I was using really small wires they're like one and a half millimeters which I think is like 16 gauge or something like that it's really small wire I'm putting in lights that really don't need a uh, big wire they're low wattage LED lights so they don't draw a lot of current from the battery um, so the, the small wires that I put in will be ample um, and plenty for what I need to do with them so 
got that first groove in, uh, tidied it up a little bit. It was a little bit messy because of that tape. Uh, you can see there, the tape kind of just bunched up. It didn't really cut the tape that well. It just cut the the actual uh, plywood underneath there. So it was also quite messy. You can see on my hat there, it just got sawdust everywhere in the camper. Um, so yeah, obviously after this project, there was a big cleanup job afterwards. Uh, just check to make sure that the wires fit in there and they can go around that corner. I then got my Dremel out uh, just to do that bit that goes kind of over the top of the cupboard and the cabinet there. Um, didn't want to do the whole lot with the Dremel because I didn't really want to freehand that. As you can see, I'm steadying my hand by resting the bottom of my hand on the top of that cupboard there. Um, so I just went backwards and forwards and did that bit there. Uh, obviously, I didn't want the end of the trim to then be stuck out. Um, because it was pushing on the wires, I wanted the wire hidden uh, all the way to the end, and then I just ran the Dremel in the groove that I'd made with the with the router just to clean it up a little bit. Um, I felt confident to do that without it jumping out of the groove. The groove at that point was probably like two or three mils deep, so plenty uh, for it to be safe to just freehand it down like that uh, without causing any problems. Then got my trusty Swiss Army knife just to cut the edge of that tape and to clean up the edges of that groove a little bit so that it was a bit neater um, when I put the wire in there with some Psychoflex. Then just did a dry run, putting the trim back onto the grooves just to make sure that it covered everything and it all looked okay. I was pretty happy with how it looked. I didn't put the cable in, but it was looking good. Then started to prepare the light. So I took my uh, wire tool, wire cutting tool, and bared the two cables on this light. Uh, so this particular light uh, doesn't matter the polarity. Uh, so you can connect the red and the black to either of the cables that comes out of the light. I then got my cables ready, I bared those as well and got them ready to connect in to a barrel connector. Um, so I'm just using a simple blue, or no actually I used a red one for this, um, just the smallest possible. So as I mentioned previously the cables are really small. So with the bared wire in there, I put it in the right size crimping uh, groove on the front of the tool and then cut some heat shrink to heat shrink it on so I put the heat shrink on so that I don't forget about it even though I could put it on the other side and then put the cable that came out of the light into the barrel connector and crimp that on as well. I always do a bit of a tug test at the end of crimping and I also like to just crimp with two hands um, so I know that it's crimped hard and, and strong that there's no chance that, that cable will come out of there. Um, so yeah, as I said, just do a bit of a tug test to make sure that the cables are in there properly and then heat the heat shrink up so that that glues up. I always like to use heat shrink with adhesive as well, just adds extra strength and stops any play in the cable that could uh, wear it out or cause it to break or anything like that. So just heat that up and then I would move on to the black one. So same process there. So get a barrel connector and put that onto the black cable. Two hands again, do a bit of a tug test, make sure that it's in there solid. Cut the heat shrink, put that onto the cable and then crimp the cable that comes out of the light. These thin cables that come out of lights like this, those are even thinner than the cables that I'm installing in here. Um, I actually have quite a long bit bared and then I just twist it and bend it back on itself. So it's a bit thicker. Um, so yeah, get that into the barrel connector and crimp that nice and hard. I usually crimp a little bit with one hand just so that it holds the cable and then I go with two hands and get it nice and tight. Then uh, heat shrink again, heat it up, get that nice and solid. Um, with this heat shrink that has adhesive, I like to leave it for a few minutes after I've put it on because it's quite soft and pliable as soon as you've finished heating it. Uh, so I usually just leave it on there. So I'd left it for a couple of minutes. I then uh, kind of rolled the cable up a little bit in the back of the light and then put some duct tape just to hold it all in place as you can see there. Um, just so that I have peace of mind that it's not pulling on anything or anything like that. There's a bit of cable in there just to have it completely loose and, and flexible and not moving around or anything like that. And part of the taping it in like this is just to keep the cables uh, in situ there. I then uh, put the light up and I just eyeballed it really just to get it straight. I knew that once I started the first hole um, I could then straighten it out. So I just made sure that I got the center in line with that groove that kind of 
turns the corner there because I knew that was the center of the uh, roof and I got that first screw in there and then you'll see when I go I, I usually try and go diagonally uh, at this point so I then uh, just eyeballed it step back a little bit made sure that it looked alright before I put this one in and then I just sent it um, after that it doesn't really matter the order of the screws I just make sure that it gets up nice and tight there make sure that the cables are out of the way and in their groove properly and uh, get it nice and tight onto the roof um, obviously don't strip the cables and sorry the screws and uh, just make sure that you get it nice and tight but it doesn't have to be super tight it's not holding much weight and then put the psychoflex into the groove I've got this new uh, gun for my psychoflex and any sealant for that matter that uses the compressor which gives a really nice even bead which is quite good I then put the trim back on and then what I realized at this point is that the cables were quite heavy pushing down on the trim so I realized I needed to put a couple of pins back in there so I was very careful with where I placed those pins so as not to hit the cables and I got them in just on the side of the trim I knew that I had a bit of a gap so it was safe but obviously if you're doing that be careful with that and then while I was at it I decided I was going to put a couple of extra lights inside the big cupboard above the fridge uh, so this is a bit of a black hole at night and even during the day for that matter so screwed the light into the bottom of the shelf obviously you can see that shelf is actually loose it just sits on some brackets I decided that I'll just put a light on there anyway we don't never move that shelf out and we just know that you can't just pull it out because there's a cable holding the light that's attached to the light there um, so yeah put a uh, cables same cable that I used for the other light onto the cables that come out of the light and then I put some conduit on this one because I'm not putting the cables into the wall or anything like that I'm just gonna fix them to the bottom of the shelf and then up the wall so I just threaded the cables into the conduit as you can see here hid that nicely uh, fed the cables through from the other side so obviously uh, the, these lights are even smaller than the ones on the roof so really don't need much uh, to carry the current that they need to run so I'm just running two cables like this that I'll then just join and split off to each of the lights. I think these lights are literally like three watts or five watts, something like that. It's a really small amount. So these cables are ample for the amount of current that they're gonna be drawing. And then in the same sort of process. So uh, on this side, I was putting in the two cables. So obviously this is going from the source so inside the cupboard to the first light and then the second cable coming out of here would then go to the second light so it's basically just daisy chaining the lights on like this um, and for the current that they're going to be drawing uh, it's plenty safe enough to do it this way um, so yeah just get good crimps on those two put a heat shrink onto both of them black and red and then got the second light onto that so just crimp that nice and solid two hands again just get it good and solid crimped in there not going anywhere uh, same for black always do a bit of a tug test as I, as I mentioned um, don't like the idea of cables coming out and then the heat shrink helps as well so uh, if, if you're ever in a situation like this where you have the heat shrink potentially behind your gun like this make sure that you put it into position before you start heating the first cable because it will even if it's like three or four inches away from the end of the gun it'll start shrinking I then got that light in and then started to tack the cable up with some uh, conduit brackets or not brackets what are they called saddles um, got my DeWalt uh, screwdriver in there as well just to make things a bit quicker and laid the cables nicely put the covers onto the lights and that's pretty much it on these lights just need to connect it up at the source so I decided here that I was going to tap into the main wiring loom so I got the plugs off the back of the switch uh, just to see and I made sure that they were correct and that they were live uh, I, I knew just from where the switch is situated that I got it definitely on the on the light wiring loom um, and I was comfortable with this because it then shares the same fuse in the, at the fuse uh, switchboard uh, as the rest of the lights so I, I like the idea of that and I also know that these lights are drawing such little current that the cables fine so there's no risk of fire or anything like that because of overloading the cable so I literally just wired them in like this uh, just to keep things a bit neater I just put uh, because I had two wires coming out of this loom so one to the two 
lights in the cupboard and then one to the light on the roof I just put it on alternating sides of my barrel connector uh, just so that I didn't have like three wires coming out of one side and then just one wire out of the other side I just felt neater in my head in terms of actually putting it in there so just crimped them both in like that had a good piece of heat shrink on there and you can see the plug just sticking out there which then would go back onto the back of the switch and i decided to put it before the switch so this is the source that comes directly from the fuse switch board uh, because i don't want the switch that operates the lights underneath the cupboard to affect the light on the roof and in the cupboards i want those to work on their own switch uh, so did the same with the black cable and just crimp that all together you can see the plug there as well same sort of concept so one of each of the wires going to the two different lights uh, just went into each side of the barrel connector so just like that you can see there and as I finished crimping here I realized the mistake I'd made anyone guess before I mention it so I didn't put heat shrink on this join, which was annoying. So I landed up then just deciding to use insulation tape. So I'm not a huge fan of insulation tape for a permanent fixture like this, uh, but I didn't feel like cutting it because the d amount of cable to that plug was quite short and things like that. So I decided to just leave it and I would just live with it. So yeah, I left it like that. Put the covers back on, put the cover back on the trunking that goes up the side of that cupboard on the inside there. and everything done and so there we have it fully wired into the wiring loom over here can't even see that anything happened here and uh, I'm pretty stoked with how that all turned out this was a bit of a pain um, just the weight of the wire actually kept pushing this down so I actually landed up putting just a couple of extra pins so I put three pins one in the middle and then one on each side just to kind of hold it up there the psychoflex is now set so I'm pretty chuffed with that and uh, yeah, it's looking good. I'll give you a bit of a tour now, but yeah, I'm stoked with how it's turned out. So hopefully that's been helpful. If you followed the whole video, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.